Last week we fitted these water drinkers. There's four in this house. Today our job is to connect up the electronics to there. When we're finished, this drinker will be a computer controlled, internet connected smart drinker. <laughs> Way overkill, but I promise you it's going to be a good idea. The weather this week has been amazing which has meant that we had to do our fourth cut silage much earlier than I had planned. So that took Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and then Thursday I had to sort of do all the jobs around the farm which had been neglected for three days. So that took up my whole day Thursday and then this morning I had to mow a paddock for bales, go bring home some cows which are due to calve, go get a load of silage. So it's now, I looked at a watch, I don't have a watch. Why did I do that? It's now 1 p.m. on Friday. I need to stop talking and let's go do something. So I have three of these PCBs already manufactured, but I'm gonna make another one just so I can record it to show you. I also have four of these cases already printed. These are 3D printed, designed, printed by myself. This is a plastic called ASA. Absolute pain in the butt to print with, but it is so strong. So this is our case. This is our PCB. PCBs are going into the case. Bottom of the case, we have an ethernet port, we have an on and off switch, we have a status LED on the front that is essential. You need to know these things are running and who doesn't love a flashing light? And then here we have a gland which has a seven core cable coming out of it. That seven core cable goes to a separate box which has connections inside it, which takes our relay, takes our flow meter, joins them all into the control board, which connects to the computer over the ethernet port so we can read the flow meters and we can control the relays. Does that make sense? If not, you'll see it in real life, it will make sense. So the rest of this manufacturing process is gonna be a time lapse. So enjoy the next three minutes. It's probably gonna be like the next two hours of my life. <laughs> Next up, we are going to put the code to control this onto the board. I already have this code written. I've been using it for a few years, so I know it's reliable. Right, so we've plugged our board in, we're going to upload the code, and then we'll get this mounted into the case. So that's the code on our board. I need to now write on it the defined IP address and the MAC address because if I forget that I won't know which is which and I'll have to just turn on stuff to try to figure it out. So you're going back into time lapse listed. We have our connector to solder onto our cable, our cable to connect to the board, we have our switch to solder in and we also have our LED to solder. So this is going to take half an hour. Enjoy the time lapse. I'll probably skip bits.
table coming out of it. This then goes into a waterproof connector like this. And the other cable on the other end of that connector, it goes into like a junction box, which then splits the connections out into the relays and into the flow meters. we are nearly finished. We have our controller, we have our cable with our waterproof connector. Now this is a seven core cable and it goes in to this box. This box is gonna have five cables coming into it. It's gonna have power, our controller cable, it's gonna have two relays, one for the automatic drain valve, the other for a shut off on the feed line. So when it's draining, we can also pulse the feed line to fully rinse it out and then one final cable for the flow meter. Things have got a little bit messy. I promise it's a good design. I've over 200 systems built using this design. Sometimes simple is better, even if it looks a bit messy. I'll show you all the wiring and then we'll test to see if this works and go and get it installed. Here's our bundle of cable, don't worry about that. Our control box is up and running. Our little LED is flashing, thankfully, so it's all working. We have our ethernet cable, our control cable, and our switch. This is the white box. I just shorted something. Did I? I just heard something very suspicious. I think it might have been a fly. Okay, never mind. This is inside of our gray box. So we have our two relays all wired in. We have these Waco connectors to join everything together. Am I shorting something? There's such a weird noise. What is that? See that we read a bit of heat shrink. That was the noise and it sounds just like shorting electric. Oh my goodness, that was scary. Anyway, this is our like junction box, I suppose you would call it. We have our two relays. We have a lot of cables all connected together. I know it looks a mess, but I promise it's a good design. This is our seven core coming in from our control box. This is our power cable coming in and the flow meter will plug in here. So now to test the box, we're gonna come over here and use a thing called packet sender. Let me just minimize this desktop. And this is our IP address. So if we send the command 110, we will get back the flow rate. So currently zero flow rate as to be expected. And if we send the command 210, this relay should light up. I heard a click and our relay's on. So all working, first try, no errors, excellent. I've been busy, I've got it installed, so we have our control box, we have our relay box way up there at the top. We have a relay, our flow meter, and we have our drain valve fitted. So now we have to test it all. So let's go and start turning on relays and see what happens. The first thing we have to do is turn this box on, make sure it flashes green and that we get an internet connection. So let's do that first. Right, uh, I can reach it from here. Right, turn the power on. So 
the thing is, I have to use my phone to turn them on. So, I'm going to turn them on and then video if it worked. What an anticlimax. <laughs> but it's the only way I can think to do it. So, let's try that. That would be a pretty good sign. So we just turned on this relay up here. Now, the main relay is not turned on yet. So let's go turn that on. I was worried that would leak, but it hasn't leaked. Let's test that before we go turn on the main relay. It is on, but it didn't release. Can you see the red light? I had to take this apart to screw it in here. So I think I put it back together the wrong way. So let's take it apart and find out. But I've changed my mind. I have to go in like 10 minutes. So we'll fix that bottom relay tomorrow. Let's just get water to the cows again for the morning. So we're gonna turn on the main relay, which is up here. So let's turn this on. I have the other drinker turned off again. So then we'll go back and we'll turn the drinker on again. And then that'll be the whole system set up. Bar the relay that's broke, but I'll fix that in the morning because we're gonna have to continue this video then. Okay, I can hear the water rushing through the pipes. So that's our primary relay on now. So let's go and fill our drinker. Me that finds this stuff super exciting. <laughs> like, like I cannot tell you how happy I am that this stuff works. It is so, so infuriating when it doesn't. But the satisfaction is unbelievable. So let's recap. We now have water coming along this big pipe at the top. That water is from our tank above the parlor, which at the minute is filled with plate cooler water. That tank will automatically top itself up if it gets too low using the well water. The reason we need to do it from the plate cooler tank instead of just the main well is that during milking, the cows are constantly drinking out of this. I was working in here today during milking, this evening, and this drinker was constantly filling because the cows were constantly drinking. Now, it is an extremely hot day. You can tell because I'm sweating so much, but still, that's when you need as much water through the plate cooler as possible. It's adding about two degrees to our milk. It's not the end of the world, but if I can do it better, I want to do it better. So number one reason for all this is that it's feeding from plate cooler water, so we no longer have the issue of the pressure dropping when the cows are drinking. Reason number two is these drinkers are gonna drain themselves and I want to automate that whole process. The way we do that is we measure the flow going to each drinker. If we detect that the cows stop drinking from a drinker and it's abnormally low and they're maybe drinking more water from the back drinker, we will know that this drinker is dirty. If this drinker is dirty, we want to automatically drain it. So if a cow makes a mess in it, they're not gonna drink out of, all, out of it all night. That's gonna have an effect on milk. That's gonna cost a lot of money. So we are gonna detect that and drain it. Make sense? We can also schedule these to drain so that every three days, for example, they will drain and they maybe drain when the cows are out for milking, for example. I don't know, we'll worry about that tomorrow. Let's test. The final relay, and we'll also measure the flow rate because we can just read the flow meter and we'll see what sort of a flow we're getting to these drinkers from our tank above the parlor because there's not a lot of fall and it's taken 60 meters of pipe to get here, longer 70 meters of pipe. Okay, so we just turned our relay on up here. That's our control box. And our drinker is filling pathetically slow. Good news, I think it's just air locked. It's spluttering and letting a lot of air out and it is getting faster. Okay, let's get this video finished. It is now the next morning. I've had a busy morning of farming, milked, fed the calves, fed the cows, went and got silage. It's been a busy morning, it's now 11 o'clock. I have one hour to get these water drinkers finished. And we have two problems to fix first of all. And then we're going to go into the lab, that's what I call my office, and we're going to look at the code, look at how I built them, look at how they work, look at the command protocol, and what we're going to do is we're going to leave the actual computer software control part for another video, 
because that is going to take way more work. It's never happened in this video. I want to do it properly. I want to make a little touch screen display so you can control everything. And I'll have real information about how much the cows are drinking. Can I automatically drain the drinkers? All of that stuff. There's going to be a part three. It'll be a couple of weeks. I have too much to do next week and the week after. But for now, first job is to get that solenoid valve fixed. Hopefully, I just built it again wrong whenever I took it apart to get it screwed on. Worst case, I lost a little spring or something in a slat. But we'll try to get that fixed first of all. This is the part, I wasn't sure what way it went in. Let's try it the other way. Let's turn this relay on, see if this drinker will drain. I'm really hoping it does. If it feels, I'm gonna just leave it. I'll come back to it at some point next week. So I've come to the conclusion that I lost a part of this valve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy a new one and then whenever I get it, I'm gonna take it apart and see what way the inside of it was. And that way I can tell if I lost a part of it, if I put it back together wrong, or if I just got really unlucky and got one that didn't work from the start. To our second problem, and that is that there is pipes in here leaking. Ow, my knee! Ow. Okay. Oh, that really, really hurt. So you can see where it's leaking. This one's not plumbed in. I'll get to that at some point next week. Um, but these joints up here, they have plumber's tape on them, but they're only hand tightened. So I'm gonna go and tighten them properly. Now, hopefully that fixes the leak. Then we can get to the lab and get some code written and I'll explain how all of this is going to work. So it should be all good to go. You can see the orange box up there is our main controller. That has the main flow meter, main relay valve. That relay valve is working 100%. So more than likely I broke the other relay or it came broken. Hence why I'm gonna order a new one. And not waste all day trying to fix the one that's there. Let's chat about how this system all works, how we built it and get into the details. It all starts with a PCB. The maker of these is a company called PCBWay. They are very kindly sponsoring this two part series. If you want to get PCB manufactured, I cannot speak today. If you want to get PCBs manufactured, PCBWay are a brilliant company. I've worked with them for years, long before they sponsored me. Super fast delivery from two day production times to five day delivery times to Europe. Brilliant company. They do so much more than just PCBs. They will make 3D prints for you. They do laser cutting. Go check out their website. There's a link down in the description if you want to see what they can offer for you. So once we have our PCB designed, which is actually not that difficult, it's kind of connect the dots. The hard part is knowing what to put on here. Once we have that designed, we have to put the parts on and we end up with this. So we have our Raspberry Pi Pico, which is our brains, our computer. This is the part which has the code. We have a little chip which takes our three volt signals from this little processor to switch things on and off and changes it to a 12 volt signal, which we can then use to turn on them. Big automotive relays in the white box, which allows us to power the high voltage relay water valves from a little tiny signal on this chip. This is a power converter or a buck converter. 
It takes a fairly wide range of voltages and takes it down to five volts, which is needed for the Pico. We have a buzzer, which isn't used, and we have a quick connector right here to break all the pins out so that if there's any problems with these boards, they're easy to switch out for a new one. I'm not going to show you the code because either you're not going to have a clue what it's saying, or if you do understand computer code, you're not going to be very impressed because it's very simple. But I'll tell you the basic principle and the principle is that when this code receives a three digit command, which for example might be 111, we're going to break that down and each one of them digits means something. This code knows what them digits means. That is what it receives from the brain, the controller, the computer, which is controlling this whole system. So to actually send the command, we use a protocol called UDP. It's just a really simple, non-secured, non-encrypted communication protocol. And we just send a string of three values. So in this case, I am sending 220. That is where number two is the command, which is for relay control. And then the number two in the second position, I'm terrible at explaining this, is for which relay we want to control. So we have two relays, so we want to control the second one. And then the third digit in the string of three is the state, so on or off. So we're gonna send a zero, for example, will turn off the drain relay. So at the minute, the drain relay, which is not working, it is still powered on. So we're gonna turn it off from here by sending the string 220. And it'll send back a reply saying relay two off. It's meant to say off. There's clearly a bug in the code where I forgot the O. Yep, I forgot the O in off. Probably gonna have to change that and update the code at some point. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little two-part series. Huge thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring these videos. What I'm doing here in this farm is quite unique. I have a weird blend of coding electronics and farming. Hopefully that keeps this channel pretty interesting. We will not be short of content, I can promise you that. For the next few weeks, we will be back to some farming. I wanna get into some of the technical stuff around good silage quality, soil compaction, the business side of the farm, do a bit more on how much money we make, what's happening with the milk price. We have a lot to cover, but for now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, hit the subscribe button down below. There's gonna be a video a week, at least one a week. I will make sure of it. Um, so see you next week.